Welcome everyone. <laughs> this is going to be one of our talky talk videos uh, because usually we like to show you what we're doing, but uh, sometimes we have to talk about what we've been doing. Yes. And as a wise man once said, it's the best... Heck. <laughs> <laughs> The best learning comes from other people's mistakes. So this week we want to share some of the mistakes that we have made over the years here on starting our homestead. Despite the fact that we have a beautiful yurt behind us, buying the yurt was actually one of the uh, earliest mistakes that we've made and uh, one of the biggest ones. Uh, yeah, had a lot of repercussions for uh, the beginning of our building the homestead here. We had bought a yurt in Russia from a company and I did some, uh, some, some background checks uh, because they gave me some references and I don't know in the end whether they were real or not, but at least I reached out to them and uh, they told me that uh, they were a great company to work with and stuff. Uh, so we ordered the yurt and it never came and we ordered it uh, right before we bought the land. The planning was that the yurt would arrive uh, four weeks max after uh, we would come onto the land. So that was our main priority when we came onto the land was to find a spot to build the deck and uh, so that the yurt would arrive and we could move in. Um, so I, I started cleaning uh, a spot and uh, cleaning some more and then we found out there was a road on the pl a spot that we wanted to build it first. Uh, we got a digger, Frank with his digger came here and um, he started digging the platform here and we found out that it was really rocky so we had to change the plan uh, because the first idea was to put the, everything on the deck. So the yurt as well as the kitchen. And um, but because we couldn't dig far enough down into this uh, hill, we had to turn the yurt around and we had to make the deck smaller. And then the yurt never came. So <laughs> uh, it took until February the next year for uh, the yurt to arrive. And that was not that yurt, but another yurt that we bought and or my parents bought actually. And um, so we spent the first winter in our unheated camper van, uh, um, yeah, unplanned. And uh, that was a major uh, setback in the beginning. Um, uh, now it's all good. Um, despite the fact that the yurt is a little bit smaller, the deck is therefore a little bit too big. It works and um, uh, yeah, we're uh, happy that we are in this place where we are right now. Another mistake that we made was to plant a garden or try to plant a garden the very first summer that we were here. So we arrived on the land in June and Martin started clearing area. So he cleared this bottom terrace where we are now. Uh, where we've had the garden for the last few years. And because we were just really excited to get started, we tried to make a couple garden beds in the middle of July. Um, with my experience now, I would tell you, just don't try to plant anything at that time and expect things to come from that because that's uh, just too hard. But we were just ex excited to get started. So we made the beds, we bought some plugs, and it just didn't amount to anything. So I feel now feel like that's a lot of energy wasted. And I do see lots of people doing it still, even though they don't have uh, anything else set up. So, but because we're all just so excited to get started, I totally understand. I did that too, but you could put all that energy into um, setting up your toilet, setting up your water system, just getting all the basics done first uh, before putting your energy into there and also just researching first what's a good time uh, to plant things, which things can you plant at that time um, because even if you ha are an experienced gardener um, you might come from northern Europe or other places where the growing season is just different and it takes some adjusting and some learning to garden here in Portugal because it's just a different place and a different climate and um, you kind of start from zero in that sense. So we planted a garden that was a failure. It was a wasted energy. <laughs> I wouldn't do that again uh, and just put that energy towards 
other maybe probably more important things friendships as an adult it's already really quite hard to make new friends uh, but obviously we moved to a new area and you want to build up that friendship uh, yeah. with people and but a mistake that we made in the beginning was putting too much energy towards friendships that were superficially okay but we already kind of felt like it wouldn't work out in the long run because we just had a different interests and different expectations and just different views on life yeah well i wanted to add to that is that because we've moved here uh you think that you uh would vibe with uh people just on the fact that they also moved here uh or are from the same country as you are um uh, that you have something in common and that could be enough to build a friendship on uh, but we've yeah we just found out that that is not enough uh, you can have like a good relationship of like uh, just neighbors or whatever but not necessarily friendship and uh, i think that was kind of a bummer uh, after putting so much energy into it right from the get-go that uh, a lot of that energy just was not uh, yeah rewarded with a friendship yeah, it uh, wasn't yeah. reciprocated no. or it was just yeah, or, or a waste of time. Yeah, waste of time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that is like, uh, of course, you you want to try and and keep trying to make new friends and stuff. But I, I think we now know that that just the fact that you're you're you've you're, moved here. Yeah, you're and, both foreigners yeah. in Portugal, and you all uh, live off grid. That's not a basis for a friendship, from what we've learned. And it's not yeah. that as some people thought after Martin's video. Uh, it's not that we don't uh, get along with people who think differently. Uh, we certainly do and we have lots of friends who with different beliefs, but um, there needs to be a certain level of mutual respect and mutual interests. However, that uh, may look for you um, or for us uh, we, we do have a social life <laughs> yeah yeah definitely but it's yeah it it, it, it takes a while and yeah. uh, it, it isn't all uh, uh, sunshine and rainbows or whatever no. they say um, yeah it's not like uh, no I won't use that word <laughs> <laughs> welcome to my hole again uh, this must be our biggest failure so far um, I dug this pond which clearly isn't a pond at the moment, um, with the digger as the first project. And um, I struck a water channel underground, which I knew was there, but it was much deeper than I expected. And therefore it, it ended up being the bottom of the, the pond. And it fills up really quickly because all the water from the whole valley comes through that channel. Uh, but it also drains through the same uh, hole and uh, that happens after the water pressure uh, subsides and um, yeah and the water can flow back in um, so we have a pond for about uh, three weeks after every uh, rainfall or uh, heavy rainfall and um, that's great but not what we wanted so uh, what we're going to do is to to remedy this problem is to dig it deeper and make it wider especially in that direction so we can follow that water channel up the hill hopefully and uh, get it higher relatively to the uh, relative to the palms and uh, therefore it should only become an inlet and not an outlet anymore the second issue will also be remedied by that is namely that we have voles and in this embankment they make their homes and uh, therefore every time uh, I am fixing new holes um, and plugging them and that's also not ideal and hopefully if we get everything on ground level um, then uh, yeah it should remedy this issue uh, did we know that this was going to be a failure it, well it was very likely because it was also my first project with the digger and the main purpose of this was to uh, practice with the digger and uh, get some skills and uh, now that I've done some other projects and I have become better um, I know how to improve this as well and uh, make it much better and functional as an end product which would increase our capacity to store water uh, well significantly 
Okay, our next mistake, failure, something that's not going great at the moment is the fact that I don't drive. So Martin is our only driver at the moment. Um, I just always lived in villages, in small cities where I could bike everywhere or larger cities where there was just good public transport. So I never had the need to need to learn how to drive. But obviously now we need to do a lot more driving because um, well, we can walk to the village, but it's quite a walk. But to do any type of shopping and to just get anywhere, uh, we have to drive. And so that's a task that always comes down to Martin, which is um, not his favorite activity. And it's just it would be much easier and obviously also safer uh, because if something happens to him, I should be able to drive. So yeah, that's kind of something that I still need to work on. I did try to get a driver's license, like a speed course before we left the Netherlands, but because the system is so overloaded uh, for the last couple of years, I wasn't able to. Um, and then now here I need to do it here, which is cheaper than in the Netherlands, but it's also in Portuguese, obviously, which is something that I still struggle with, um, especially su such specific language. So um, yeah, hopefully within the next couple of years we can get that sorted. But it's um, something that's not grow going great at the moment. So there you have it. As I just said with the driver's license, one of the things that we still struggle with, so we're kind of still failing in that aspect, is the language. Uh, we've been here in Portugal for quite a few years now, but learning the language and mostly having good conversations in Portuguese is something that we, I more than Martin, very much struggle with. Um, I was never a language learning kind of person, so that's uh, one issue there, but also well, there are things like circumstances. We are on our land most of the time, so we do not see a lot of people constantly. Um, and um, and there we've been, uh, we moved onto the land right before or a year before COVID. So we had a year of, of socializing and then everything was cut off for almost two years. Um, uh, that didn't help and uh, the language learning courses uh, there was supposed to be one in the village which still hasn't happened yet uh, but the ones that uh, you can do in Castello Branco are um, uh, hard for us because uh, we have kids and you can't bring your kids there so one of the people has to go so either I go by myself or because Leia can't drive I have to bring her and take the kids back and forth and um, yeah that is very hard to co combine with the work that we have to do um, so we really yeah. hope that this course yeah. in the village will uh, will start at some point because that might be easier to get to um, it's not unwillingness it's really no. it's circumstances and we do feel bad about it but yeah yeah uh, it's it could be better it's uh, definitely mm. a, a work in progress and we do really try but it's it's just very hard yeah yeah <laughs> let's talk about these sad little saplings here um th these are three leftover uh, citrus trees that we planted when we first arrived here like many others uh, we wanted to start planting trees right away because they take a while for uh, them to give fruit and uh, these seem to be very close or a good location because they are close to our base here uh, with the camper van but now of course things have changed we've moved over to the other side of the valley and um, these trees are too far to walk to with the watering can and um, yeah we don't have a pump that reaches here so we didn't have an irrigation plan for this for these trees uh, one of them got uh, trampled out by a javelin so we replanted it on the other side and left these um, there's one still alive which is a wild version um, it's growing below the graft um, and um, yeah that was a lesson learned the other thing that you have to consider citrus trees do grow here so uh, you should be able to get these established here however um, we also planted trees that 
didn't really suit this environment or this climate, uh, like two uh, walnut trees. Um, and um, we wanted nuts because we want to diversify our, our, uh, our available nuts. Um, and we have acorns, but we want to have hazels and walnuts seem to be uh, a good addition to that. Um, but we planted them and our neighbors came and said right away uh, or a few weeks after we planted them they won't survive here um, it's uh, you need to plant them far more up north where it is wetter and uh, it gets colder during the, the winter um, and they were right uh, one by one they died um, and uh, one was at the end of last summer and one at the during the heat wave of this year um, so no more walnuts and we won't plan, uh, plant any new ones unless we can get a good uh, irrigation system going for them and uh, find a good spot where they would, uh, would thrive, which is not, clearly not down there. Um, yeah, so consider your climate when the, you choose the type of plants you want to plant and, uh, and uh, make uh, an irrigation plan, a plan for it. Um, that's it. Some of the viewers may know and others uh, will not have any uh, clue about is that we had a, we tried to work together with a Dutch company uh, to do our honey with um, and uh, they were supposed to teach us how to do everything and then they would take all our honey uh, in, at the end of the process and we would learn in the process and that would be a win-win situation in my book. Uh, but. Uh, it turned out pretty fast or it, it became clear that uh, they weren't really willing to give us the right tools to succeed and um, that didn't make us feel like acknowledged or respected in any way um, so we, we cut it off uh, but that took a bit of uh, time and uh, didn't go very uh, friendly let's say no so we tried to i mean as you will see in our videos we tried to do different business things and tried to set up different things and this felt like an opportunity to us mm. but um mm. in the process we learned a lot about business so about clear expectations from all parties and that kind of stuff um so it didn't work out in the end um uh, we don't really mind <laughs> no. because now we just do it ourselves and we learned a lot from it so as with all the failures there are negatives but there are also positives from this experience all right uh, let's talk about something that we haven't talked about much and that's our uh, batteries um, we have used these for uh, two years now and uh, they have been a bit of an issue um, they uh, are not as uh, good as we thought they would be. Uh, we didn't know any better. We uh, thought about it when, before we buy, bought them, uh, whether we should go for lithium or for uh, lead acid. And uh, well, the advice that we got was that we could still go for lead acid because we, they are cheaper. Uh, because we didn't want to move them. Uh, they are not mobile. Um, but yeah. If we knew, we if we would have known what we know now is that uh, lithium ion is much better, and it's just the uh, lead acid is an old technology uh, that uh, um, yeah is not great. So when we move to the new place up the hill, we will probably replace this whole set with uh, lithium and maybe expand a little bit uh, on the panel side, um, and that's a lesson learned. Thank you uh, for watching. Uh, I hope you can learn a lot from the mistakes that we've made uh, i assure you that we will make plenty more mistakes that you can learn from we will share them uh, every now and then in one of these videos and uh, i hope to see you next week thanks for watching bye